for all the problems that Europe has, its electricity supply is actually doing very well. We don't have full year data yet because the year isn't finished, but let's take a quick look at Q3 data to show you what I mean. Compared to the same period of the previous year, electricity generation from natural gas is down by 9.3 terawatt hours. And gas is the most scarce form of energy, at least in Europe, so this is really good to hear, but how exactly was this gas displaced? Was it displaced with coal perhaps? Not at all. In fact, coal electricity is also down year over year by another 7 terawatt hours, and when we add all of the fossil fuels together, they're actually down by 16.3 terawatt hours in total. So this is obviously great for the climate if you care about that, but how was this 16.3 terawatt hour gap actually closed? Did Europe perhaps import electricity? Well, the Union imports more electricity than you'd think. Remember that UK and Norway are not Union members, but they do have large interconnection capacity. However, net imports are actually down by a further 7.5 terawatt hours. So not only does this not fill the gap, it actually widens the gap to 23.8 terawatt hours. So gas is down, coal is down, imports are down, everything is down. Surely this must mean that the consumption of electricity is going down as well and this is a demand story, right? Demand destruction, deindustrialization, going back to the stone age, but in reality, consumption was up. Up by 12.7 terawatt hours in fact, so our gap widens once again, this time to 36.5 terawatt hours. That's a significant number, it's 6.2% of the electricity supply, so there was a 6.2 percentage point change in the mix of electricity somehow, with all the indicators we've looked at so far moving in the right direction. Did Europe perhaps get lucky? Because we know that precipitation precipitation can vary widely from year to year, so perhaps Europe simply enjoyed a surge in river flows, but not really. The great European drought was in 2022 and we're comparing to 2023 here, so while hydro was in fact up, it was only up by 6.2 terawatt hours, which still leaves 30.3 terawatt hours unexplained. Part of the solution actually comes from nuclear. This may be surprising to some people, but nuclear was actually up two years in a row, adding 11.2 terawatt hours year over year, and this is thanks to higher capacity factors on existing reactors, which itself is partly enabled by the higher consumption. But that still leaves a 19.1 terawatt hour gap, so finally we get to the elephant in the room which is wind and solar. A 20.8 terawatt hour increase in wind and solar year over year. Now methane methane because we ignored some miscellaneous sources, but clearly wind and solar are the closest things to the answer. And the mix between them is actually 16.8 terawatt hours from solar and only 4 terawatt hours from wind, so the single biggest answer was solar, just as we expected. So to recap everything so far, Europe did not get lucky, VREs do not show large yearly variability, solar especially shows almost none, so this isn't a matter of favorable weather, this is a matter of build out. Wind, solar, nuclear, gas, coal, imports and consumption are all pointing in the right direction, with small increase in hydro being the only luck component. But this is not even the end of the story, because I can tell you for certain that consumption is actually up a lot more. A lot lot more. See, nobody in Europe actually builds utility scale solar anymore. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, although in some countries it literally doesn't exist, but the economics strongly favor self-consumption today, and this means not only rooftop solar for homes, it also means rooftop solar for businesses 
including industry. So we're talking big numbers. And what you need to understand is that every terawatt hour used in self-consumption is not reported on these charts at all. It only exists behind the meter. So if the majority of the solar additions were on site solar, this means that the majority of the 16.8 terawatt hours of new solar production, I believe would represent just the leftover excess electricity exported from the new on-site installations, which means that for every one of those terawatt hours, there are likely two or three more terawatt hours produced and consumed behind the meter. Now we saw on the chart that consumption was up by 12.7 terawatt hours, or about 2.2%. But if we assume a 2 to 1 self-consumption ratio for the new solar, that would be enough to push it up to 46.3 terawatt hours, or about an 8% increase, and if this had been metered, it would actually put consumption at all-time highs. And this self-consumption ratio is likely to get bigger in the future, in my opinion, because 2024 started with batteries being expensive, but it's ending with batteries being cheap, so while the installations in 2024 are unlikely to have been paired with batteries at construction time, I believe that the installation in 2025 are going to contain a very high ratio of battery storage. The price drop in batteries has been sharp, perhaps 40% in a year, so I expect the popularity increase to be just as sharp. And if you're in Europe and you don't have solar but you have a roof, and perhaps you feel like you're missing out, that's the correct feeling to have about it. Go get solar and prioritize self-consumption. Thank you for watching, I'll probably do a full update in January when the full year data comes in, but until then, like and subscribe.